What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Once again, it's that time of the week where I read to you this week's Glassnodes on-chain newsletter, Glassnodes Insights. Let's get into it. It's week 34. There's a lot to cover. Before that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. And like, share, and uh, let me know what you might think about this down in the comment section as well. I really appreciate it. And one last thing, uh, look in the description. You'll find a bunch of other resources that I've uh, gathered together over time. If uh, any of those fall, uh, fall into your interest, I'm glad I could help. Anyhow, let's get into it. This week, a bear market mirage. The Bitcoin market recently experienced a wave of short relief, with prices trading above the realized price for 23 consecutive days. However, weakness in the underlying asset uh, ac network activity has manifested as a sell-off this week, with prices falling once again below this key cost basis level. The Bitcoin markets recently experienced a wave of short relief with prices trading above the realized price for 23 consecutive days. However, weakness in the underlying network act uh, activity covered in week 31 has manifested as a sell-off this week with prices falling once again below this key cost basis level. The realized price currently trading at 21,700, while spot prices are slightly below the realized price is 21,300. Uh, 21, during the 2018-19 bear markets, prices fluctuated, prices fluctuated below the realized price for 140 days, making the prevailing bear market duration of 36 days relatively brief, brief and thus indicating more accumulation time may be required, as discussed in week 28. In this edition, we'll explore the underlying weakness leading to this week's sell-off, alongside metrics to keep an eye on support uh, a more macro scale recovery. Diving back underwater, with realized price now overhead, two additional on-chain models sit below the market as potential support levels. The delta price and the balance price are well-known on-chain models with a track record for coveraging, converging with prices around cycle bottoms. Delta price, 13,760, is a hybrid pricing model found on both technical and on-chain basis. It is calculated as the difference between the realized and the all-time average prices. Delta price has previously caught the bottom wicks of bear markets. Balance prices, 17,180, represents the difference between realized price and transferred price, coin day time weighted price. This can be thought of as a form of fair value model capturing the difference between what was paid as the cost basis and what was spent transferred. The chart below highlights the similarities between the current market structure and the bottom formation phase in 2018-19. An opportunity for distribution. Initially, we will examine the trend accumulation score by cohort to provide granular insight into the accumulation distribution behavior of all market participants separated by wallet size. Zooming in on the recent recovery from the local bottom in mid-June, we can observe two distinct phases. Phase A, after crashing below $20,000, shrimps less than one Bitcoin and whales greater than 10,000 BTC, excluding exchanges and miners, were net accumulators, while other investing classes showed a balanced regime. Phase B, following the initial reclamation of uh, reclaiming of the realized price, all cohorts seized the opportunity to distribute their coins. Interestingly, shrimps persisting strong accumulation momentum those being under one Bitcoin, has also weakened in this phase. Therefore, the recent price appreciation triggered a distribution phase across the board, adding sell pressure to the market. Tracking demand via network activity, following the principles of supply and demand, sustainability of a bear market rally can be critiqued when the supply side is not balanced by new demand and rising network activity. The number of new, the number of unique new addresses which appeared for the first time is an effective tool to gauge the activity in the network. Due to intraday volatility in activity, the absolute value of new addresses on any given day can be uninformative. However, 
The trend of new addresses entering the market can provide a strong signal for network activity. Therefore, we shall compare the monthly average of new addresses against the yearly average to underline relatively sh relative shifts in dominant sentiment and help identify the tides turning for the network activity. Bear market confirmation alongside prices plunging from the April 2021 all-time high. The 30-day moving average of the new addresses fell sharply below the 365 daily moving average. This established confirmation that the bear market phase was likely in effect through the lens of the network activity. <clears throat> then there was new demand confirmation. After a lengthy market consolidation phase, an abrupt spike of the 30-day uh, moving average above the 365-day 365 moving average for new addresses has historically signaled a promising sign of new demand entering the market. Examining the recent spot market bounce, price bounce above realized price shows that monthly average of new addresses is still lower than the yearly average. This pattern could be considered a validation of low demand in the market. Probing further into the demand side, minor revenue from fees allows for evaluation of the competitiveness of block space. This can be considered a measure of network congestion and demand for inclusion in the next block. Low demand, early stages of the bear market realization, frequently coincide with the evaporation of fees from miners' revenue. Here, the typical range of 2.5% to 5% has acted as a historical threshold between high and low demand in the market. High demand, in contrast, in contrast, a sustained entrance above the affirmation 2.5 to 5% range can be considered a constructive sign for assessing a new wave of demand. The current structure of this metric demonstrates a low but noticeably rising level of demand for block space. Despite its simplicity, measuring the momentum of paid fees for total settled value is an insightful macro indicator for assessing the complex dynamics of inc of increasing network demand. The presence in retail investors in the network can be gauged by analyzing the long-term trend of small transactions. The following chart displays the 90-day moving average of the total volume of transactions with a USD value of less than $10,000. Assuming small size transactions are primarily attributed to retail investors, <clears throat> The quarterly smoothed average of this metric can be used to track the dominant sentiment of the market. Long-lasting bullish phases are attractive to retail investors and bearish periods are less so. The trend of small transaction volumes can be used to gauge the market atmosphere. Interestingly, the recent positive movement towards 24,400 was not accompanied by any shift in retail size transfer volume or demand. This pattern adds additional confirmation of the underlying weakness of this market rally. Looking at the stack total inflows and outflows to all exchanges in the USD value, we can also extract a similar correlation between the cyclical behavior of Bitcoin prices and USD denominated exchange inflows and outflows. Exchange flows have now declined to multi-year lows, returning to a late 2020 levels. Similar to the retail investor volumes, this suggests a general lack of speculative interest in the asset persists. To establish an explicit indicator based on this connection between exchange flows and wider market sentiment, we define a new metric, exchange flow multiple. This metric equals the ratio between monthly average exchange flows and its yearly average value. Exchange flows are defined as the average of USD denominated inflow and outflows volumes and outflow volumes related to all exchanges. I'll read that again. Exchange values are defined as the average of USD denominated inflow and outflow volumes related to all exchanges. The inflows plus the outflows divided by two. The exchange flow multiple can be used as a threshold which can be used to map early and later stages of a bear market. In agreement with previously discussed charts, the recent price comeback from the June 2022 bottom was not accompanied by a significant influx of speculators into the market. Thus, from the above observations, it appears the recent price rally had little substance behind it from an on-chain perspective and thus confirms the weakness we originally highlighted in week 31. Short-term holder confidence. 
Monitoring network demand and activity with an emphasis on retail investors and speculators can provide insight into mapping the twilight stages of a bear market. However, to complete this puzzle, we will close with an evaluation of short-term holders' confidence. The current market structure, structure does resemble past bottom formation patterns as discussed in week on chain 29 report. Generally, non-speaking, after a lengthy accumulation phase has taken place, any positive price movement tends to bolster the confidence of short-term investors with a cost basis near equivalent to market value. In line with this, a sustainable bullish uptrend is usually accompanied by two macro shifts. First, declining realized losses, as all remaining sellers are exhausted from the market, and then profits realized by short-term holders as new demand, new demand absorbs sell-side pressure. Decreasing realized losses, Investigation of the 2018-2019 bear market show that as the very final stages of the bottom formation, the net realized profit loss, the 90-day moving average, has gradually recovered to neutral as the final sellers are exhausted from the market. We use the net realized profit loss 90-day moving average looking for a structural decline in realizing net losses. If it persists longer, this pattern pivots to realizing net profits that the market can now comfortably absorb. The current inclination towards net loss realization demonstrates the price vulnerability against any negative force in the market. Absorption of profit taking. Looking at the short-term holders SOPR 90-day moving average, we can see a quarterly smooth ratio of investors selling prices relative to buying prices. The important threshold level in this metric is a crossover of 1.0 with a break above indicating a return to profitable spending. Following the capitulation from the November all-time high, short-term holders, top buyers, as we call them, realize heavy losses, causing a sharp drop in short-term holders SOPR 90-day moving average below one. This phase is usually followed by a period of low conviction where the break-even value of one acts as an overhead resistance. This occurs because investors are quite willing to sell at around their cost basis to simply get their money back. Finally, after sufficient bottom accumulation takes place, a sustainable break above 1.0 often confirms that new capital is flowing into the market and is absorbing the profit taken by short-term holders. In conclusion, this report we have discussed the main factors that led to the weakness and subsequent rejection of the price from 24,400 back down below the realized price. Investors from a variety of wallet size cohorts decided to distribute during the recent rally above the market average cost basis level. The recent price uptrend also failed to attract significant wave of new active users, which is particularly noticeable amongst retail investors and speculators. The monthly momentum of exchange flows is also not suggesting a new wave of investors entering the market just yet, implying a relatively lackluster influx of capital. The current market structure is certainly comparable with the, last, uh, with the late 2018 bear market, however, does not yet have the macro trend reversal in profitability and demand inflows required for a sustainable uptrend. Therefore, the ongoing cycle bottom consolidation phase is most likely as Bitcoin investors attempt to lay a firmer foundation, subject, of course, to the persistent uncertainty and unfavorable events of the macroeconomic backdrop. What do you have to say about that? Is this market going to be leading others? Or are we all just subject to what the macro conditions are in the world, wars, what the Fed is doing, raising rates, uh, look into uh, Arthur Hayes' most recent article where he talks about a hidden way in which it's not really a hidden way in which money can still flow and in a way of inflation, but still raising the interest rates. It's quite interesting that often we talk about that it's the concept of the value of a dollar going up is bad for on-risk assets and people follow that indication, but more so it's truly the amount of money, okay?
Think about that. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I appreciate all your time listening this week. Love you all. Peace.